There's an optimistic side of me that believes in my heart that anyone can pick up anything regardless of its complexity and given enough time and energy and will uh, figure out how it works. That you who are watching this, if you were really large and really strong, could pick up a rocket and take off its top and fiddle around with its brain parts, um, figure out how it works if that was really what you wanted to do. Um, there's also a side of me, however, that believes that it's uh, important to have the right words to figure things out. That there's certain, um, that our conscious mind oftentimes works uh, via words and thinks with words and that if we don't have the proper vocabulary to uh, grasp these things it could be enormously dif difficult to do so. That uh, we maybe couldn't just go right ahead and figure out what a rocket, how a rocket works unless we had certain words like wires or I don't have those words, so I can't tell you what they are. Um, so it also might be with games that one could, with some effort, reach into any sort of games uh, rule book and components and um, with enough will and energy uh, and time suss out exactly how it's played, regardless of background. However, at the same time, it's a lot easier to pick apart some games and figure them out. I've found from my own experience, if I have, if, if one has experience with a game uh, of its same lineage, of its same um, language group in a way. Uh, so that can make certain sorts of games harder to access, access uh, for certain sorts of people who don't have the lineage or the background or the, the vocabulary to work with those games. Um, one game I think that helps bridge two lineages, I think, um, is Battle Leader Tactics. Battle Leader Tactics is a game where players will take on the roles of these different leaders uh, from different periods of military history, and they'll compete through a series of uh, bluffing exercises to see who gets the most victories. The game is played in rounds, and on the given round, each player is going to choose a tactic from their deck of tactics to play face down, as well as a certain number of army cards uh, to play face down. Which tactics they have to choose from and how many army cards they have to place are determined by the statistics of their leader. Then, after they've played their secret things, they turn them face up and compare the results on this table. The primary information you're going to get from this table is how many of the army cards that you played face down you're going to have to get rid of. So usually it's one or two or three depending on who picked the better tactic against the other person's tactic. So you have to um, you have to interface with the table and you have to sort of internalize the table when you're choosing. The game in a way is a lot like paper, rock, scissors. It's got, it, you know, at the very basic form a bluffing game is paper, rock, scissors. Only this is a table-based paper, rock, scissors sort of mix that's, you know, it's a lot more complex than paper, rock, scissors. Um, people who I've played this with who weren't, weren't comfortable with tables found that to be difficult. I would submit that if you were interested in games that have tables, however, this is a great starting place for that, a great stepping place into the world of tables. After army cards are subtracted due to the tactic, the totals are summed and the person with the higher score gets the point for the round. And when you're laying, choosing your army cards to, to lay down in a hidden manner, you have your whole deck of armies to choose from, which I found a little bit frightening, a little bit overwhelming, but also freeing that I had this much to choose from. Um, in a way, the army cards you place down are sort of like a bet that you are going to have the better tactic because if you, say, lay down your artillery and you are in a situation where you're going to lose a card, then you are going to lose your artillery, and I think you only have two of those, and so that's bad for you. Artilleries are worth five points. Bluffing, addition, and cards are things that uh, are, are probably going to be familiar to a lot of people. They're a part of a, a lot of lexicons, a lot of... Um, a lot of experiences that people have with games and general life. Um, things like enfilade and refuse left and bombard, maybe frontal assault, and these different words are maybe not 
nor our tables necessarily in the use of games. So that's why I think uh, Battle Leader Tactics makes a particularly good bridge between these those two worlds, um, given that the, the player is interested in learning how to use tables in games and the sort of um, interesting complexity that can result from looking at a matrix to determine what beats what as opposed to just knowing that my scissors beats your paper. Beyond its educational value, I've been having a lot of fun with this game. Um, I enjoy what if scenarios, what if so and so were to confront so and so, and what would happen if these two confronted in this manner under these circumstances. The game is an abstracted version of that, but uh, that, that I think that enables you to have Robert E. Lee interact with Suleiman without it being too weird. Um, there's also special little cards like um, elephants and things like that, which are a lot of fun. Um, one thing I'll say, it is a print and play game. If, when you make your copy, if you so decide, or if you have someone else do it for you, have the different decks have different backs. I find uh, that to be one of the most confusing aspects of the game is you have all these decks of cards laid out, and if they have the same back, it can just oh, it can be problematic. So make sure you do that. I think that I would I highly recommend it. Battle leader tactics.